All right, fellas. So here we go again. Another year has gone by. And uh, at the end of every year, I sit down and I look at the, the year that's passed, go through the whole journal, the whole thing, and I try and work out uh, page by page what went good, what went bad, and I try to extract some sort of, uh, some sort of lesson, some sort of takeaway, something. Uh, I'll write down every set, every rep. I write down a lot of the time how I feel, physically, mentally, all that stuff. So there's a lot of information there, and this, this task is very, very difficult uh, and time consuming and sometimes very frustrating uh to do you know going back in time and seeing the mistakes you've made seeing some of the previous thoughts you've had is a very frustrating thing uh this is i think why a lot of people don't like to debrief about certain events certain times they don't like to go back and uh one thing that i've learned is that the mind is a trickster you know how you felt about a situation is more ingrained into your skull than how what actually happened some of the facts are probably not clear, uh, but how you felt is very, very clear. This is how our memories work. So, uh, what I've done is I've, I've done a, a cheat sheet here. I've written more extensively in the in the actual book that I have, the journal. Uh, but I've tried to summarize all these thoughts, and it's like I said, it's very, very difficult to summarize a whole freaking year, twelve months worth of thoughts, exercises, ideas. So some of these ideas might come across and you're like, well, that's, you know, you haven't dug deep enough in here. You haven't, you need to dive deeper in some of these ideas, you know, connecting some dots. Uh, that might be true still, but I've done more thinking and it's probably hard to express 12 months worth of lessons in, in one video. So the reason why I do these videos is primarily for me, to be honest with you, because I'll go back and I'll sit down and I'll listen to myself talk about the journey. I'll listen to myself talk about the lessons, the, the results, all these sorts of things. Uh, to be honest with you, this is why I started the YouTube channel. I didn't start this YouTube channel to become a YouTuber. I started this purely because it was a tool for me to kind of grow. Uh, but, uh, you know, I also found that a lot of people find value in this as well. Watching somebody go through the struggle, go through the grind, learn from their mistakes, make obvious mistakes, um, as frustrating as that is, um, so here we go. I'm gonna basically go through month by month, basically type of thing, to what I uh, what I've learned, what I've what I've um, where I've made mistakes, what worked, what didn't. So I'm gonna start off with outlining the goals for last year. So this time last year, I sat down and I wrote down what the 2022 goals were gonna be. They are as follows. I wanted to squat 230. Well, that was a fail. What I got was <laughs> two twelve and a half, which is a 2.5 2.5 kilo increase in 12 months. <laughs> is that good? If you say to me right now, by the end of 2023, you will add another 2.5 kilos, I would be pissed. So I'm pissed seeing that. Um... That is not good. I don't like that, especially squatting being such a primary motivator for my working out. I'm going to get sunburned here. Primary uh, motivator to, to work out. And so to see 2.5 kilos in the back squat, I don't like that. So that's the first bad thing which pissed me off as I was writing this. I mean, I knew this the whole time along, but anyway, let's let's continue. I wanted to bench 160, but, but this time uh, this year. I still haven't hit 140, which is my previous max. Uh, but to be fair here, I have had very inconsistent training with bench press because I've struggled so much with other areas of my of my lifting. Uh, so 160, man. This goal has been with me now for two years in a row, same as 230 squat. I've been I've been doing this for for two years, writing the same numbers. But last year I had a pretty good increase in the deadlift. Uh, from memory, last year's max was 260, this time last year, up from 240 
the year before. So between 21 and 22, I hit 20 kilo increase, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which was fantastic, um, if I'm not mistaken. This year, I've hit 265, so I've added five kilos to my, uh, to my deadlift. And I swear to God, at the start of the year, I was confident I was going to get 280 plus. I thought I was going to get 290. The way everything was moving, the way I was feeling, it was fantastic. But we'll get into that. Uh, the only positive this whole entire year, and it sticks out like a freaking, like in red, sticks out really, really boldly, is that I have added 22 and a half kilos to my front squat. So my front squat went from 160, and I hit that year, year and a half before the start of this year. So probably within the first year of the Squat Everyday program. I hit 160 around that period, the first year. And then I went away from it for a very long time. And then I got back into it this year and I hit it with a vengeance. Uh, I, had a, I had an idea that if I increase my, my front squat to 180, I'll be able to hit 220 on the, on the back squat. So I went after the front squat and it started flying like crazy. So my front squat right now is 182 and a half. So that is a 22 and a half kilo increase in the front squat, which is incredible. So as I stand here, I've got a 180 front squat and a 212 and a half uh, back squat, which is weird, I think. Kind of, kind of, kind of seems like it's they're really close together. Um, so let's go through it. I've spoken about this period of, of training for this year quite a few times, uh, but between January and March was a very successful period of my training. I started the year very, very well. Um, I often go back into the journal and I often look through that period because something worked in that period. And uh, when something works for such an extended period of time, you have to go in and study that. It doesn't happen by mistake. You know, you don't just walk into gains like that. Something happened. So go in there and study it. And I've been there and I've studied many, many times between January and March, what happened? What happened during this period? These are the things that st stuck out to me. RDLs, marching, and ham curls. Hamstring curls, I did a lot of hamstring curls, a lot of marching, a lot of RDLs. At the start of the year, so the first 21 days, first three weeks, I was going crazy with RDLs, like 200 for sets of five by five. By five. I, was, I was gunning them, killing them, smashing them. Uh, putting basically 90% of my economy into that. Uh, all of my recovery points were going into the RDLs. And then I started going, okay, let's, you know, I haven't really been squatting all that heavily at all because I've just been RDLing like madman. So then I transitioned into five by five back squatting. And I can't remember exactly what led to the marching idea. I think it was all the RDL work. My, my, um, my hip flexor started playing up. So I started kind of doing brainstorming, you know, psoas skills, all that sort of stuff. And then I somehow stumbled, I've watched a documentary or something. It was probably some sort of a, if I'm not mistaken, some sort of documentary about war or something. And I noticed a lot of guys marching in the army. And I thought, why are they doing that? Is that just for show or is that something doing? And so then I tried it and I was like, God damn, like my hip flexors are being lit up here. So I started doing that and I started feeling my hips were opening up. So I matched up back squatting five by five, seven by five, eight by five, basically sets of five with marching and I had really good success. That led uh, to a whole bunch of great squatting for a whole bunch of weeks. Uh, I ended up hitting 190 for three sets of five in the squat. That's fantastic. That is probably the best squatting I've ever had. In the same period between January and March, I think because of the hamstring kills, because of the RDLs, because of all the squatting, I hit a 265 kilo deadlift uh, on the cameraman's uh, second son birthday. Uh, so the little fella was born and on that day I was feeling great, went over there. It was the first time I went to the gym in like three weeks because we were in lockdown, we couldn't do anything here. Uh, it was the first time I went to the gym, smashed, smashed 265 and it felt really good and I watched that video a billion times and felt like I could have hit 270. Ah, so why did I stop all that? You know, that's the first thing that I think to myself, why didn't I just continue January to, to freaking December doing this? Well, hip pain. At the end of March, I wrote extensively about hip pain. That spiraled out of control to a point where it was bad again. So then I went on this quest of trying to address what the hell was going on, like I had been doing for the last three years, trying everything and anything, testing, retesting, 
experimenting all sorts of things and just to name a few i did side planks i did leg press i did sit-ups i did rack pulls i did all sorts of things in the quest simple quest to get rid of hip pain so i can get back to what i was working before eventually by the time i hit april mid-april i started pin squatting because that was the only thing that was really making me able to squat with decent amount of weight without the pain so then i started hip squatting uh a pin squatting rather and that was kind of going all right uh if i remember i hit a 200 kilo pause squat during that period anytime you see me pause squatting uh it's probably because i'm in pain not because of knee pain it's because of hip pain because when you when you when you go with with force into a squat and then you pop back out I, that's the worst thing for me so when you see me pausing most of the time not every time but most of the time is because i'm not feeling right um and then of course after towards the end of the april you know i did a whole bunch of pin squats that was the focus for april and then the beloved COVID hit me and that she wiped me out for about seven days and for about two three weeks i wasn't feeling right uh lethargic short of breath headaches it continued um for quite some time and then may may and june uh i was kind of recovering from covid trying to fight it blah blah blah, blah. i had this urge that i was gunky in my chest i was feeling just like crap in my lungs from the covid uh, and so then i just had this intuition to do some sort of huffing and puffing some sort of metabolic conditioning stuff so then i started doing high rep squatting because i have a very clear memory of high rep squatting you know doing well to me it was in the middle of winter so extended you know um you know april may june that kind of stuff uh it's winter for us it makes sense to have extended warm-ups and so i thought let's let's address two things at once started high rep squatting and then between may and june uh, i had this run of excellent squatting again so i got rid of the hip pain probably because of covid probably because i stopped doing the things that i was doing in january and march with the really really heavy squatting and then in may june i teamed up the high rep squatting that i mentioned and hindu squats and in this period i managed to hit 170 175 front squats and then i think the following week i hit a 212 kilo and a half kilo back squat this is between may and june this is probably the most successful period of the training uh may i would say uh shortly after covid or probably actually that's probably june now um that was a great great uh period of squatting for me um so january march great april i was screwed um uh, end of march april i was screwed with hip pain and covid and then by the time i reset june came around i started hitting all these prs in the front squat and the back squat and then july i decided to try olympic weightlifting i tried to teach myself i tried to uh regress it watched a whole bunch of videos started doing that and in this period i was also still doing hindu squatting and i still was still kind of doing the uh, the high rep squatting here and there Ju july uh ended up hitting 180 kilo front squat um the Olympic weightlifting was time consuming, very, very fun, very time consuming. And I started um, clashing some of these things. Like I was, I was spending a lot, a lot of time in the gym. The high rep squatting was kind of a good match at the time, I remember. Um, and then eventually I gave up Olympic weightlifting. I think it was like four weeks that I did it for, you know, snatch balance, overhead squatting, just basically empty bar kind of stuff. That's what I was doing. Um, in August, stopped the olympic weightlifting um and i think july august i also got it says he's sick again but the dates are probably over there i probably didn't write this correctly i think i got sick around the olympic weightlifting period but in august uh i had 45 hypers here in good mornings that was also a thing that i was trying to do uh and then essentially what stopped the period there was i got sick again middle of winter uh covid going crazy kids going to childcare. Uh, picking up all sorts of bugs so i got sick in august <sighs> and then another reset so then i went, moved away completely from high rep squatting altogether because of the sickness i didn't want to tax the respiratory system more than i than i you know not just respiratory system you know breathing in the sharp sharp air in, in the gym and in, in the garage but it was also the exposure at work working in ed you know coming home having snotty kids and so all of that kind of piled up and i let go of high rep squatting 
and I, I remember I made videos about this and I spoke about how I just can't afford to do it anymore. Like I'm freaking running out of sick leave if I can't be taking so much work from, so much leave from work. And frankly, I don't want to be sick anymore. So then I started going into this like period of, you know, limiting my volume, trying to up the, the intensity. Um, do, started doing this um, 45 Hyper Good Morning business, which eventually evolved in me trying to load it even heavier. And then between September in October, I started focusing on rack pulls. Now, deficit pulls were also in there as well, which I probably didn't mention. Like, like I said, it's really, really hard to summarize all of this. But for, for a very long time, I think it was January, March that inspired the, the post-August, August onwards to about October, uh, November, inspired me to kind of go into the whole posterior chain stuff, started doing deficits, went from the deficits, started doing rack pulls, uh, try to basically imitate or replicate RDLs in the really good period that I had in January. Um, the September thing was really weird. Rack pulls didn't really help him with the deadlift because at this point I hadn't deadlifted 260 for a very long time. So rack pulls didn't help him with pulling. However, rack pulls, what they did help me was with was hitting a front squat in October, 182 and a half kilo front squat. So the rack pulls strengthened the hell out of my lower back which didn't transfer to deadlifting, but transfer to front squatting. Because when you're in an ATG front squat, it's all about that lower back extension or, or trying to keep it from rounding. Because once you round your lower back, it's finished. So that was an interesting thing. Um, the rack pulls didn't help me with that, but it helped me with front squats. Uh, I think it was like a four month period that I didn't hit a deadlift at 260. I kept hitting 240, 240. So I got weaker in this period in deadlifting. However, I got stronger in front squatting, which is really weird because I always thought that if you imp improve your front squat, your deadlift is gonna go up, but it didn't. So I detrained there some parts, strengthened some parts throughout this middle period, middle of the year period. Um, and then of course, once again, after October, in October, I got sick again. So I got sick, I got COVID in April, and I got sick with just probably whatever it was. Um, common cold or whatever you want to call it in august and october and then i got sick again in november or was it december november covid again so i had covid twice and just a general normal cold twice so i had four periods or four weeks basically of being sick this year i have never been sick like this in my entire life the first and second year of me training um or the first year and a half of me doing the squat every day i, I never got sick then I then COVID hit and I started getting sick like crazy. Jabs or no jabs, I don't know what the hell was going on. But a lot of people around me were also getting sick. You guys have your opinions about that as well, obviously. Whether the jabs you, you know helped me or not, I have no idea. There's many conspiracies, many different takes, lots of different signs. Who sponsors that science? I have no idea. Lots of bullshit, lots of confusion. But basically, the summary is, is I've never been more sick in my entire life than this year. And that probably impacted my training destroyed the middle part of the year april to to you know august um you know sick twice during that period man so and then november december as you guys remember recently i started running that ended up with a calf injury strain i'm good now to probably start running again been thinking about it recently as well Obviously, it went back to the Louis Simmons idea of wide squat, uh, wide stand squats, and, and um, obviously I had COVID again. But this is just a rough, rough overview of what happened this year. Basically, in my eyes, it feels like a failure. But the front squat business is like the only point of positivity uh, numerically, you know, in terms of how I feel looking at the numbers. It was a long year, lots of thought, lots of time spent into this puzzle solving. I've learned a lot. Um, hip pain got me in, in March, um, ended that beautiful period. Um, lots of things happening, you know, going through my mind right now, but essentially, in terms of a lot of these ideas that I had for 2022, they failed. So my approach for 2022 failed majorly. Uh, 
I missed many red flags while I was training, which led to the hip pain. I probably didn't plan my winter season properly. I had no idea I was going to be so sick. Probably shouldn't have done high rep squats, although it helped me with numbers. Don't want to get sick. Trained hard. This is the thing. You start getting frustrated when you get into a rut and you start pushing even harder and then the body hits you. We're, gonna, we're sick now because you've just overdone it. Uh, so the 2022 goal is a failure in many ways. Two and a half kilo in the back squat, that's shit. Nothing on the bench, that's mega shit. Deadlift five kilos, I thought it was going to be way better than that. You know, 265 is a good deadlift, but my Lord, at the start of the year, man, things were flying. So I'm kind of pissed off about that. The only thing that I'm happy about is the front squat. So moving to 2023, if I was to say to you guys, I'm going to do the same thing again. That's a sign of an in insane man. So I need to change something. In my bio, many, many, many moons ago when I started the YouTube channel, I wrote I wanted to hit a 300 kilo back squat, 300 kilo deadlift, 180 bench. And then there were two other points or three other points, or th two other points of kind of like secondary goals, which I hinted. Initially in the first year of training, I did train it, moved away from it. And those two goals were basically calisthenics. I wanted to do 30 strict dead hang pull-ups. I wanted to get that. That was like a lifetime goal. And I wanted to hit 100 push-ups in a row. Like I said, I trained it in the first six months of this training program, moved away from it, went purely down the powerlifting side, chasing numbers, chasing plates on the bar, moved away from the basics, which are pull-ups, push-ups. So for 2023, I decided that... I clearly have this problem of being consistent with bench pressing. It's complete not existent. I just, any chance I get, I try to avoid it. It's like my internal drive is not there to bench press. Something about laying down on the freaking bench is just, I don't know what it is. I just never get motivated. You know, I, I, I don't have this ambition. I want to bench four plates, but I don't have the drive. I don't have the fuel for it. It's really hard to, squat, you know, to, to bench four plates if you don't want to bench, right? So, instead of me continuously tripping over myself and forgetting about bench press altogether, I decided for this year to focus more on those secondary goals. Push-ups, pull-ups. And on top of that, I'm going to put dips. Dips feel really good for my shoulders. And I feel like they're going to transfer really well to the overhead press, which I haven't spoken much about at all uh, in this video. Uh, but it has been a recent really good discovery and a good motivation for me. A lot better than bench pressing. So I feel like if I just get a whole bunch of calisthenics volume in, which I find fun. I, I prefer push-ups over bench. I think dips are fun. I like the pump. I like pull-ups. I've always loved pull-ups. That was kind of the first thing that I enjoyed about training um, was doing pull-ups. So I'm going to try this year uh, for these goals. Squat 230, same as last year. Bench 160, same as last year's goals. Deadlift 280, same as last year. So those three powerlifting movements are the same as last year because I didn't get them. There's no point in me throwing in more, more weight on top of all this other crap when I haven't... I didn't get it this year. Uh, so for 2023, the, the powerlifting numbers are the same. 230, 160, 280. Um... That's for the powerlifting side. Now, the front squatting is the only thing that really moves really well for me. Um, so, you know, 182 and a half you know, kilo front squat right now is good. Uh, so let's challenge it even further. Maybe it's going to continue growing. Who knows? Maybe I'm just a front squat type of guy. I don't know. So I've put here 200 kilo front squat, which seems very freaking heavy to me. But it seems... It's moving well. It's moving well, man. So in October, I hit 182 and a half. I don't know. I'm pretty confident to hit 185 soon as well. So it's kind of moving in the right direction. So 200 kilos for the front squat, 230 for the back squat, 160 bench, 280 deadlift. Let's see how that goes. The bench press number 160, I hope I will be able to get there through an accessory pathway, which is going to be calisthenics. 
I don't know if people think that is ridiculous or not, uh, but I'm gonna try these numbers for calisthenics. I wanna get 100 push-ups, I wanna get 30 pull-ups, I wanna get 50 dips. Now, 100 push-ups is very, very difficult, um, but I feel like that's what led me to 140 bench press, a whole bunch of push-ups. Probably two years ago now, two and a half years ago now, I did Grease in the Groove, Pavel Tutsulin inspired Grease in the Groove, where I did a lot of push-ups throughout the day, accumulated stupid amounts of volume per week. Uh, we just simply, I think it was once or twice a week, practicing bench press, working up to a single, that kind of, that kind of thing. And it worked really well for me. So maybe this is a way for me to stay consistent, training my upper body uh, by purely doing a calisthenics type of routine. So that's my plan. Uh, those secondary goals have been kind of dormant in my mind, in my in my training program for quite some time. Hopefully now I can get reinvigorated because uh, calisthenics is just more fun to me. It's more fun to me. There's a nicer shape about me even the last couple of weeks that I've been doing. I feel like I'm getting nicer shape. I look better. Um, I'm outside, you know. Um, it gives me an excuse to always do push-ups. You know, watching TV do push-ups. Bench is kind of like, oh, I have to go around there, put the plates on. It's like there's too much willpower involved in bench pressing. Push-ups, I can always do it. I love that about it. Anytime, I work, lock room, bang, do 50. That's cool. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get 100 push-ups, but that's the goal. 30 dead hand pull-ups, that's that's difficult as well. Uh, but it has to match up the push-ups. Push and pull, those are going to be my movements. And then dips. I put here 50 dips. I don't even know if that that's possible for me. I haven't given that much thought. But right now, I'm doing like sets of 15 dips. Uh, I could probably get 20... Maybe 25 dips right now. Uh, maybe maybe dips is possible. I don't know. So that's the plan. So I'm kind of basically the, the conclusion that I put in the in the in my um, in my journal over there. What I basically said to myself was I'm going to focus on trying to improve the the the, the squatting part of it. I, I, what I wrote in the book was all I care about in 2023 is half squats and calisthenics that's all that was kind of the final conclusion after writing all these pages a full page of, of my thoughts and the reason why i said half squats you know in commas in red commas was because i think it's all about quads for me quads are, are, are for whatever reason i don't have the ability to push the deadlift is stuck on the floor and the bar is drifting forward when I squat and I'm continuously going to my posterior chain. So I feel like if you half squat, that's all half squatting is. It's just pure quads. So doing box squats, doing bench squats is what I'm calling it. Basically, ass on the bench, bouncing off of that. Pin squats, lunges, Hindu squats, quads, squats, squats. Many different ways I've experienced different things that can make my quads better. Make me push better. I just want to improve my pushing with my legs. That is it. And hopefully that's going to improve my squat because it's going to even out the posterior chain to the anterior chain. Uh, that's going to improve my, hopefully, it's going to improve my deadlift of the floor and it's going to improve my squatting. That's all I'm saying. So half squatting is not necessarily mean I'm not going to go ATG at all next year. It's to emphasize the ability to push from that parallel squat position up. I will be ATG squatting all the time, but I think my accessories are going to be things for the quads like I mentioned so that's the plan for uh, for right now uh, that's the mentality it's a 30 minute video I doubt a lot of you guys have made it to the end but these are my thoughts um, the review process is probably going to be for quite some time probably another week I'll continue to look through the journal uh, end of year for me New Year's I've, I've said this many times before like I'm not in a festival or festive whatever it's called festive feeling i don't feel happy i don't feel like i want to celebrate anything new year's for me has historically always been a review process planning for the future clean slate it's almost like we're starting in skyrim okay we have another year another year is wasted we have we have this year to improve what are we doing with our life are we are we making the right decisions i'm just telling you guys about the training aspect where my mind is but obviously life is not just about this for me you know looking at the garage 
the weights and all that. It's, it's, it's the biggest part of my free time, obviously. But there's other things in my life that I also care about and I think about. So New Year's for me is just a big, big uh, review process. Um, yeah, I don't particularly like spending it with hundreds of people in a club. Doof, 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 that kind of stuff. If I had it my way, I'd just literally sit down, you know, my family, have a beer and just ponder and let this thing take take care of this thing, you know, trying to work out what I'm going to do on all fronts. Um, I think a lot of people do that. A lot of people review. A lot of people are going to go to the gym for the first time in God knows how long, you know, throughout January, and then they're going to fade away. Um, I know my, my efforts in, in, in these goals are never going to fade away. The fire is stronger than ever. Um, it's There's no doubt about that. My effort is always going to be there. Uh, but I have to fine tune and I have to learn. Um, I always say this to people all the time. You know, sometimes I get frustrated because, you know, it's like, I've said this before. If I was Einstein, okay, if I was Nikola Tesla, this is this is not complex stuff, man. This is not light year studies, general relativity, universe calculations, all this Milky Way stuff like crazy, crazy science, physics, maths. This is simple stuff. So I get frustrated at myself that I haven't worked things out quicker, that I haven't um, that I haven't uh, connected the dots better. That's the frustration for me. I feel like the answers are in, the, in the, these two books that I have since I've started training seven, eight years. There are common denominators throughout the whole thing. The trouble is, is the body is complex. You do front squats, you improve. Okay, what led to that? Is it the quads? Is it the upper back? Okay, let's run an experiment for that. And then sooner or later, time flies by and then you're still kind of left in the dark after many, many months of trial and erroring. Um, for me... It's not all about the numbers. It's it's clearly not, you know. As you guys, if, if you've watched me for a little while, you would know that. For me, I want to know why. I want to know the the, the, the the mechanics, the mechanism of, of, of improvement. It's not just for, enough for me to see the numbers. This is why, like, you know, I will never be able to take drugs because you take trend, you take you know, testosterone, you put on 50 kilos on your squat. It's the drugs. Doesn't matter what you did, man. You know, they've done studies. People that sit on the couch, take tests and train and they improve their numbers. For me, is I want to know why. Biomechanics, what's happening. The, the mechanism of training, moving. What muscle, what's weak. Seeing somebody squat. What is happening there? What do they need? I love that aspect. And then when you finally select the right stuff, the right way to go about it, and then you see the results... It's not because of the results that you're happy. It's because you were right in your mentality, in your training, processing, thoughts. That's why it's good. Not because of the number. The number is just a justification of your original thoughts. That's what I love about training. Anyway, guys, this could go forever. I could sit here in the car uh, telling you guys about all this sort of stuff forever. But that's generally a brief overview of my 2022 Uh what I'm trying to focus for 2023. Hopefully it's going to be a better year. Hopefully I'm not sick. And my kids are getting bigger. Um, but that's basically it. Uh, wherever you guys are in the world. Uh, I wish you, guys, wish you guys a happy new year. Keep safe tonight. Wherever you are. Whatever you end up doing. Going you know, clubbing or, or raving. Or whatever people do these days. Be careful. I know emergency departments around the world are going to be very busy tonight. Uh, be careful. And at some point, sit down and ask yourself, who am I? What do I want? And how am I going to get what I want? Um, at some point in the next 24 hours, do you have a, some time to yourself, by yourself, and talk to your soul, talk to your brain, and work out where you want to, where you want to go in, in, in the following year? Uh, because another year is going to go by really quickly. I'm well aware of that. Um, the years keep on going by really quickly. And uh, we can't get this time back. So 
you want to make sure you're not going blind into the future. You want to have an understanding who this is and how you want to go forward. That's the biggest thing. I mean, this powerlifting business, you know, Olympic weightlifting, bodybuilding, all this stuff is great. Um, but it's a small piece to the greater puzzle. You know, even though that piece has its own little puzzle, it fits into the grander scheme of things of life. And um, just take care of yourselves. You know, it's, it's a crazy world out there. Um, but anyway, don't want to get too philosophical now. Have a good New Year's, guys, and I'll see you on the other side, and I'll continue on with my journey and my processing thoughts, and uh, I hope I see you uh, in the comments. I hope you guys continue to support me and uh, this crazy journey that I'm on. Um, I appreciate all of you guys. That's another thing that I haven't mentioned. Since last year, there's been almost 30,000 new subscribers to the channel, which is insane. Um... Never thought I was going to be a YouTuber, but it's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling to know that a lot of people relate to you. A lot of people uh, like your presence, like your ideas. It's a nice feeling. Obviously, there's a lot of people that have a go at me, private messages, comments, all that sort of stuff. Um, I don't worry about too much about these people. What I care about is you guys. 36 minutes, you're still here. That means a lot to me. It means a lot to me to have support like that. Um, and also to have somebody that's like-minded and wants to have these types of thoughts, wants to improve. That's a really cool thing for me because essentially a community like this, doesn't matter the size of it. If you've gathered a community, that means there's a whole bunch of people out there that see life the way you do, um, think the way you do, that's a beautiful thing. You found your own little kind of place in the world. Um, if anything, this YouTube channel has settled me, made me feel like I'm not so rare in my thoughts. Um, it's, it's a nice feeling to know there's a, there's a lot of people that are wired in a similar way to me. But anyway, this is getting ridiculous. It's a very long video. Just want to say again, guys, I appreciate all the support this year. Appreciate you guys always. Um, thank you for all the tips you know, of the trade, tricks, all these different ideas that we exchange back and forth. You guys sharing your experiences about your own journeys. I uh, thoroughly enjoy communicating with you guys in the comments, seeing what you guys experience, because anecdote for me is the best evidence there is. So thank you guys, and I really look forward to another year of all of us trying to work out our own puzzles. I appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you in the next year. Peace out.